Well, the OECD has put out some research today that looks at the financial literacy of Australian teenagers. And I've got to say, it's not great news. Apparently, the financial acumen of our 15-year-olds has fallen significantly since 2012, according to this OECD study, which surveyed nearly 15,000 school students. Um, why is this happening? <laughs> and why does it matter to talk about it? My guest on the program is Marissa Schultz. Now, Marissa is a director at High Rise Financial Solutions, but she's also spoken a lot in the past about, sorry, Rise High Financial Solutions. <laughs> I'll get that right. My apologies, Marissa. Rise High Financial Solutions. She's also spoken a lot in the past about financial literacy and our kids. Um, she joins me on the line. G'day, Marissa. Hi, Gareth. Nice to be on the show. Thanks for inviting me. My pleasure, and uh, and thanks for your time today. So why do you think it is that our teenagers are getting less savvy when it comes to managing their money? Look, I think there's a number of reasons this is happening, and I think it stems um, from a lack of financial literacy in schools and also a lack of financial literacy education in homes. And as our society is becoming more and more cashless, as we proceed, you know, as we move into the digital world, it's becoming harder and harder for children at all ages, um, from very young children to teenagers, to understand the concept of money management and understand the value of money, and basically develop those essential life skills that will see them, you know, see them managing their money well as adults. So I think there's a number of factors that are leading to poor financial literacy amongst our teenagers. So is that because we've largely and increasingly done away with cash back perhaps in previous generations of kids? They knew what a one cent piece, a two cent piece, a five cent piece, a ten cent piece and so on, uh, what those things all meant. And you could actually have a physical representation of a store of wealth and a store of value as opposed to what's increasingly happening now, which is all cashless. Well, absolutely. I think that the fact that we've gone cashless has definitely made it harder for children to grasp the concepts of money. But to be honest, I believe financial literacy has always been a big problem for Australia. You know, many Australian adults um, are actually not very good at managing their money and are spending more than they make and um, potentially not preparing themselves adequately for retirement. Okay. And we're seeing that through several generations, and I think that that's that's main or that's largely because previously or even up till now, financial literacy is mainly taught in the home. And if the parents don't spend the time to teach their kids about financial literacy or money management, or if they potentially don't have good money management skills themselves to then be able to pass on to their kids, there has been a real gap there. And it's only recently that, you know, the Australian curriculum has introduced some financial literacy into schooling, but I don't believe it's enough. Okay. I think the fact that we've now moved into a cashless society has just made it that little bit harder for the kids to, to pick up those skills and understand that money is limited and that there is, you know, that you do have to exchange money in return for goods. I'm really interested to hear from listeners on this. 92211 is the number to call. If you've got some observations about financial literacy of kids, were you taught it at school? Do you teach it to your kids? Um, do you think your kids should be taught it in their schools? Um, because uh, the OECD suggests that our 15-year-olds are worse at managing money, uh, significantly worse than they were just a few short years ago. Um, and this is probably not a great thing uh, for that generation of, uh, of young people, nine double two double one eight eighty two is the number to call. Mar Marissa, did it, do you think that financial literacy used to be taught in schools? No, I think there's always been a real lack of um, good quality financial literacy in education, and I think where it has been included in schooling, they've they've only included it in the later years of schooling. I believe financial literacy needs to be taught right from the beginning of their schooling. I think there was another another study done showing that children have developed their money management skills by the age of eight. Eight. So we, I think as parents and as a society, we, we're not giving uh, younger children enough, enough of an introduction into money management and into really understanding that spending money has consequences. Money is limited and, you know, there associating value in terms of when they want to purchase something. So I think it's just really important that financial literacy is increased throughout our schooling and that it starts from, you know, reception or year one uh, so that 
children can start learning about money management, not just learning about the you know the cents and the coins and the and the notes, but actually learning how to budget, how to save. You know, and then as they get older, they'll be better equipped to then be able to understand the concepts of insurance, superannuation, you know, pay as you you know pay as you go tax, all of these concepts that are going to become part of their reality as they move into the workforce. That's really interesting. Uh, that research you cited suggesting that kids form their money management habits by the time they turn eight years of age. I mean, the implications. Um, of that finding are, are pretty obvious, but I suspect rather neglected in our curriculum, Marissa. I mean, if it's eight, that's sort of year two, year three. Kids, as you say, well, really need right. to be taught this stuff from, uh, from almost from pre-primary and year one. And I think, absolutely, and I think it also puts more of an onus on parents to be introducing their children to money and the concept of value from a very young age. You know, I, I have two young children myself, uh, both under the age of seven, and I noticed from a really, you know, really young age that they all they could see was the credit card or or the ATM card, you know, slotting into a machine, cash coming out, or waving in front of an ESCOS machine, and money, you know, being able to purchase anything with that, and that has made it hard for them to understand the concept that there is a value in terms of what they buy, and that you can't just have it and buy everything that you want in the shop. So there is a real onus on parents to ensure that they're teaching their children about value of money and value of goods from a very young age. And perhaps there needs to be an onus on the government to not only include more of a focus of financial literacy in the junior primary years, but also a focus on helping parents to better teach financial literacy and money management skills to their children at a young age as well. My guest on the program is Marisha Schultz. She is a director at Rise High Financial Solutions and we're talking about money and specifically your kids and how they manage money, how they learn about managing money. And I'd be fascinated to hear from you on 922-11882 how you've tried to teach your kids the value of a dollar because this new OECD research suggests that our teenagers in particular haven't got a great handle on it. Um, One of the findings, Marissa, that I find fascinating is that 20% of Australian children don't even have a baseline understanding of everyday financial transactions, things like payslips, things like invoices, um, that these concepts just aren't well understood by as many as one in five of our our 15-year-olds. Marissa, we've lost her. She's gone. (laughs) We'll try to get her back. 16 minutes past 10 is the time, but I want to hear from you on this. 922-11882 is the number to call. We've we've lost Marissa. We'll try and get her back. Um, but in the meantime, Kylie's there. Hi, Kylie. Hi, how are you? Good. That's good. Um, I just wanted to make a comment about uh, what I did with my children. I've got uh, a 20-year-old girl and a 16-year-old boy. When they were approximately 12, I got I sat down with them and worked out basically what they cost me per year. Uh, not not including food and general living expenses or school, but birthday parties, mobile phones, yep. haircuts, all those extras. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, all those extras. I divided it by twelve, and every month I put that money in their bank account, and they needed to then budget for those things. And as kids do, my my daughter's very good and was fine, and she saved up heaps of money. My son is a total spendthrift, and would go and buy Xbox games and blow the whole lot. And then when he wanted to go to the movies, learned the lesson, oh, whoops, I've spent my money. That's really interesting, uh, I, Kylie. I have found it just, both of my kids are totally different. My daughter has saved up, she's travelled, she's done lots of things. My son still has no money in his bank account, but that to me is a personality-based thing, not an education-based issue. Um, but it is still taught him, if I blow it, I can't do certain things. Thanks, Kylie. Appreciate that uh, that call, and that's a fascinating story. We've got Marissa back on the line. Marissa, what do you think of that approach from Kylie? Look, I think it's fantastic. I think that children do have to learn the hard way, uh, in a sense, and they do have to learn that there is a limitation to what they can spend. And eventually, he will he will learn his lesson, and he will he will be better for it, and he'll be able to manage his money better and, and learn the concept of budgeting and a limited you know, form of money. So I think what Kylie's doing is is really, really good. Um, I I encourage parents to start a similar approach from a younger age. It may not necessarily be um, all of their living expenses, but in terms of, you know, with my children, for example, 
Um, they're still at the age where they really love toys and they sort of want everything they, they see. Yeah. So we have a, a system at home where they can earn dollars for certain good behaviours. And that may include chores, but it also includes, you know, good behaviours that we're trying to encourage and reward. And from there, they're able to spend those dollars on things that they want. And what I've found is that um, there is a reluctance for them to spend their own money, which is really good. So they're learning that they can't necessarily have everything they want. And if they do want to buy something, then their money is reduced. So I think it's just teaching kids the concept at all ages that, there is a limited amount of money available. They need to decide how they spend that money. And at the end of the day, it's not only about spending every dollar they've got, but it's about how much are they going to have left over in the kids they can save towards the big thing that they want to, you know, that they want to buy or save towards the future. So that's also a really important lesson to teach our children because as adults, we need to know how to save money. Marissa Schultz, it's a great talking point. Um, I think it's an important one to highlight. We really appreciate your expertise and your time on the program this morning. Thank you very much. Marissa Schultz, Director at Rise High Financial Solutions.